this? That's right, Jimmy Cricket. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, come here. <laughs> I arrived at Heathrow at 12 o'clock. Mm. I couldn't believe it. I took the train. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to fell at the railway station. I said, fell at the railway station. Come here. <laughs> oh, no, he was there. <laughs> I said, I want to return. He said, where to? I said, back here. <laughs> I said, I want to go to London. He said, change it, crew. I said, I want my change here. <laughs> and there's more. I got my own back on him. I bought a return ticket and I never went back. <laughs> oh, and a fella came up to me on the train. Yeah. He said, which stop's Birmingham? I said, well, watch where I get off and get off two stops before me. <laughs> And I had a Barney with a taxi driver. Yeah. He charged me two quid. I said, taxi driver, come here. <laughs> I've only got 150. Could you reverse back a bit? <laughs> well, what would you have done, eh, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I finished up in court. The judge said, come here. He said, have you ever been up before me? I said, why, Your Honor, what time do you get up at? <laughs> He said, you've been brought before me for drinking. I said, right, I'll have a bottle of Guinness. <laughs> I finished up in prison, and one day the governor came up. He said, I've been watching you for months, and nobody ever comes to visit you. Don't you have any friends? I said, yeah, but they're all in here. <laughs> he said, on the first month, you had all your tonsils taken out. I said, that's right. He said, on the second month, you had all your appendix taken out. I said, that's right. He said, on the third month, you had all your teeth taken out. <laughs> I said, that's right. No, I said, that's right. <laughs> he said, we're worried about you. We think you're escaping bit by bit. <laughs> Oh, what are you doing now? Oh, Bob, I just thought uh, I'd make myself uh, a little bit comfortable. Oh, I've oh. got my slippers. You bought? Have <laughs> you just bought these? I bought them just uh, on Saturday, Bob, and uh, I couldn't get size eight, but I got two size four instead. Oh, right. I hope you'll be comfortable then. And just make yourself cosy for a little far side chat. For your life in comedy, Jimmy. Where did it all begin? Well, it all began, Bob, in a little village called Bally Go Backwards. Bally Go Backwards. <laughs> it was very small. We had to shoot a fellow to start a cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have any motor cars, you know, Bob. I had to take my driving test on foot. <laughs> oh, dear. Did you go, I mean, uh, did you learn about uh, show business in school? Were you the class clown? Well, I tried. The teacher, Bob, well, I was a bit worried about him. He was called Mr. O'Crikey, right? <laughs> he thought algebra was the capital of Romania. <laughs> I never told him it was Czechoslovakia. <laughs> I remember one day I said, sir, when I leave school, I want to be a physicist. He said, good, somebody has to put the bubbles in the lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about your gags is old and young can enjoy them. And I'm sure they must prove a bit of a help when you're trying to pull the girls. I've never had much success with that, Bob. Ah. Oh. Oh. Thank you, folks. I met one girl once at the disco, you know. I, I took her home to meet my dad. He said, where did you get her from? He said, she's cross-eyed, <laughs> bow-legged, no teeth. I said, you don't have to whisper, Dad. She's deaf as well. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, obviously, you get through life 
<clears throat> with your wonderful sunny good nature, with the advice and guidance of your wise, grey-haired old mummy back there in Ireland. Yeah. You know, I'll never forget the day I left home, Bob. Well, I told her I was coming to England, and the tears rolled down her cheeks. They always did when she laughed. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she writes to you regularly, she doesn't does, she, Bob. Jimmy? In fact, just last week I got a letter. I thought you might have done. Oh. I look forward to these moments. I'm so do I. She said, Dear son. Oh, it is me. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your letter dated the 43rd. <laughs> <laughs> We've just come back from Spain for a holiday. Oh, that's oh. Good. It was 80 degrees in the shed. But we were okay, we stayed in the sun. <laughs> I don't know the way people can tell the time by looking at the sun. I can't even see the numbers on it. <laughs> Your little brother Sean has been caught pinching apples. The policeman said he can keep the apples if he brings the lorry back. <laughs> Sister Mary has had a little baby. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, so I don't know if you're an aunt or an uncle. <laughs> if the baby's a girl, she's calling it Denise. And if it's a boy, she's calling it the nephew. <laughs> Lots of happiness from your loving mummy. Ah, P.S. Yes. There's more. I made this a short letter because I'm going to be ringing you very soon. <laughs> you can't get any sooner than that, can you? No, man? she's certainly truthful. Hello? Oh, hello, Mum. Yeah, how are you? You've been to Spain. Yes, I read all about it in the letter. Yeah. Dad bought one of those Amigo watches and a Spanish fella stole it. It was Adios Amigo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the way home, on the plane, the pilot said he was going into a low dive. Dad asked him to get him six bottles of Guinness while he was in there. <laughs> What's that, Mum? Yeah, a man called last week at the door, said he was a Jehovah's Witness. You told him you hadn't even seen the accident. <laughs> what? He asked you what you thought of euthanasia, and you told him they weren't much different than the youth in Ireland. <laughs> Well, thanks for phoning, Mum. Yes, yes. She's going to have an early night. Oh, yeah. Last night, you were up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Dad thought he had a hole in his heart, but it turned out to be a polo mint in his pyjama pocket. Jimmy's achieved so much, I guess, I know it's been a long career, Jim, but uh, it seems to have speeded up so much in recent years. Uh, what ambition have you yet to achieve? Well, I'd like to play the part of James Bond. <laughs> well, it's In hard. fact, I've written off to that fellow that produces it, uh, Albert uh, um, Cabbage, uh, Cornflower? Broccoli. That's him, that's him. <laughs> and I can see it now, it could be called... The man with the golden wellies. Ah, one. I've got them, Bob. One. Yeah. Well. And I'll be called, Bob, I'll be called Double O'Reilly. Oh, that's a great name. Yeah. Yeah. Roger, Roger Moore's days are numbered. That's right. I joined MI5. It's just off the M4. Is it? <laughs> and I'll be a double agent. Yeah. I'll work for Bodlands and Pontons. Oh. <laughs> I can do his walk, you know. Will I do his walk, folks? Will I do his yes, walk? Please, let's... James Bond's walk. The James Bond walk. Music, please. It doesn't start 
off when I'm a spy. I start off as a fighter pilot. Ah. Yeah, Jimmy Cricket, DFC. DFC. Doesn't fancy crossroads. <laughs> and the last scene's great, Bob. It comes at the end. Oh, good. <laughs> it takes place in Hong Kong. Yeah, with all the cherry blossom trees. You can reach out and grab a tin of shoe polish. <laughs> I'm in the cocktail lounge of a Salvation Army hostel. Right. <laughs> and I'm drinking a mug of cocoa. Shaking, not stirred. <laughs> and I'm waiting for him, the head of the Secret Service. And suddenly in he comes. Coat turned up, hat pulled down, dark glasses. He comes in and falls down the lift shaft. <laughs> and he comes over to me, he said, you're a moron. I said, I don't even know the Osmond brothers. <laughs> He said, when I spit, I spit money. <laughs> That's a fiver. And I go... <laughs> he says, what's that? I said, That's your change. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't want to put you down at all, Jimmy. I mean, I admire you. I'm a fan. But I'm, maybe if you can't get the James Bond part, I don't want you to break your heart. What other part would... Uh, see, I see you as sort of a, the man with no name. Clint Eastwood. Yes, the Pale Rider. Bob, I'm glad you said that. Do you think I look like him? I do, I do. Because a lot of people do, you know. Yes, you're younger, better looking, but well, you've got the style. People come up to me and they say, you've got a face like a fistful of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this, eh? the whole out. Oh, what I do is walk, what I do, Clint's walk. Can he do his walk? Eh? Let's see his walk. The, the Clint Eastwood walk, let's have some <laughs> is that the law, or is that the law? That's the law. I knew I'd get it right. Well, he walked very like James Bond, you know. Didn't he? I noticed that. Well, I can see myself. Yeah. I'd be ruthless, you know, Bob. Yes. Everybody go, ooh. Ooh. I'd be even more ruthless than that. Ooh. I'd go into this deserted saloon full of people. And there'd be a fella in the corner lighting a cigar with a broken nose. <laughs> He's got no more matches left. <laughs> and I'd be ruthless. Whoa. I'd go up to the barman and say, Barman, a pint of bitter. He'd say, wet bread? I said, yeah, two slices. <laughs> <laughs> And all of a sudden, the door would open, Bob. And this fellow would come in. And he'd go straight up to the dartboard. 800. <laughs> he threw a hedgehog at it. <laughs> and he'd come up to me, he'd say, What's your name? And I'd say, Wells Fargo. <laughs> He says, is that your real name? I said, no, it's a stage name. <laughs> <laughs> There's more, he'd say. There's more. He'd say, this is the end of the line. I'm a bounty hunter. I'd say, tough luck, I only eat Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob, yes, at Jim. that very moment, a little dog would come into the saloon, hobbling on three paws. On three paws. Because the other paw's bandaged. Oh. And he'd look around the saloon and he'd say, I've come for the one that shot my paw. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Cricket, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Cricket. Wonderful. 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 Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, at this point,